Why is it so hard to communicate with a narcissist? Apparently you can communicate with anyone, which is accurate. We can open our mouth and talk, we can send an email, send a message, we can discuss our feelings, our wants, our needs and our opinions and for most of us we listen to others, have a two-way conversation and work through any disagreements together by communicating, compromising, mutual understanding and respect for those around us. However, as most of you know, when it comes to communication with a narcissist, you might as well be talking to a brick wall and most of the time you'd probably get a better response. So yes, you can communicate with a narcissist. The problem is they lack in the understanding of others to communicate back. They can only listen to you if it's something they want to listen to. Cognitive thinking skills play a massive part in communication with a narcissist. Cognitive thinking is a process we learn when we acquire knowledge through life's experiences. Cognitive thinking allows us to gain understanding so we can comprehend, think, process, learn, remember, pay attention and apply incoming information. Narcissists often lack in cognitive thinking skills or they use them in a negative way. Cognitive reflection always been right as most people can reflect on things they've done in their life or actions they've taken. A narcissist most likely lacks in cognitive reflection skills, meaning once they've made their truth up, they cannot look back and reflect. They've made their minds up that they are correct and all others are wrong. Narcissistic people continually try to prove others wrong with various manipulation tactics. To a narcissist who always believes they are right, being wrong is unimaginable for them. They just cannot and do not get it. They will go to extreme lengths just to prove that they are right. Why there is simply no point explaining yourself or arguing with them. They simply cannot and will not see your point of view. Knowing your truths and leave them to it. We are wasting our breath trying to explain ourselves to them. And they are not going to suddenly turn around and say, you know what? I think you're right. Instead, they will go to any extreme to make you believe that you are wrong or they'll leave you full of anger and resentment. We have to learn that we don't have to take part in every argument we're invited to, especially those who are not willing to listen to others' perspectives or care about other people's feelings. Being right to them is more important than others' feelings. That, with their lack of empathy, means for us going against what their truth is can lead to devastating consequences for us. Sometimes why, when they are gaslighting us, they do it so well as to them it is their reality and it is their truth and they shall not be swayed. To most narcissistic people... They didn't say that and that never happened. To them, you are being sensitive and you are the one that's going crazy. In their eyes and minds, it's their truth. Often why their smear campaigns are done with such truth-telling lies. Yet because you are open to opinions and ideas, you can understand that people make mistakes. Their gaslighting then makes you question yourself, blame yourself and as you care, you then forgive them for their wrongdoings. Why you end up walking on eggshells, doing as they please. They can treat you so well. You then start to look at yourself to blame yourself. All the more when they start mistreating you as reality is showing you how good they can treat you yet reality is also showing you just how wrong they treat you yet when you question them over something that you believe them to be wrong about and they believe they are right they will go to great extremes to prove themselves right and prove you wrong causing that cognitive dissonance within your mind over the mismatch of realities and beliefs that you are now living under the narcissist's spell. Cognitive reasoning. 
they have that black and white thinking. A narcissist has no grey area. To them, it's either good or bad. There is no room for mistakes or errors in judgment. To them, it is all or nothing. They can only see things as either good or bad, as they themselves must be perfect. They place all the blame onto those around them for situations or problems that they have caused. Without cognitive reflection, they cannot look back to see what might have led up to that bad situation. And without empathy, they cannot see how someone else might be feeling. Most have cognitive empathy, so they can think about how someone else would feel. Yet without emotional empathy, they can simply not put themselves in someone else's shoes to feel or care how they are making someone else feel. This is why most of them will project all their failures and faults onto others. As to them, they are entitled and they are superior. Any mistakes made or achievements missed, they will place that blame onto someone else. Being around this on a continued basis leaves us feeling like we are at fault, as all their projection is slowly drip-fed into our minds. Also why we are somewhat too forgiving as we can see the good in them often with all their blame shifting when the bad comes out we are led to believe this is our fault it is never your fault cognitive distortions the blame game those on the disorder blame all others for anything that is wrong within their own lives meaning they are unable or unwilling or unaware of what actions they've taken towards others, the mistakes they have made. So they cannot make changes to who they are as they simply do not see themselves as the problem. With all the manipulative blame shifting tactics, we go the other way and start to blame ourselves for everything when in reality not everything is our responsibility or our fault. We do have to take responsibility for our own actions, but we have to pass responsibility back to others for theirs. With their triangulation and silent treatment, we start to look at ourselves to see what we've done wrong and how we could do better. This is actually good news as it means you have the ability to reflect, to look at the past, to learn from mistakes, to grow from them and to change them. The biggest lesson here is to learn who we are, to learn the behaviour we will and will not accept from those around us, learn our own worth, learn our own truth, learning to let go of those who only seek to steal our joy and no longer looking to always blame ourselves, taking the responsibility for what mistakes we have made and passing those we did not back to the rightful owner. Our own self-awareness is vital. Change. A narcissist does not see why they need to change. And as they have a disorder, it's who they are. Most often they cannot see their own faults. They can only pass them on to others and therefore see all their own problems as being caused by those around them. Believing others need to change to suit them. Again, with the gaslighting of if you hadn't, I wouldn't. And... Most genuinely believe that if you hadn't, they wouldn't. However, most often, you haven't actually done anything wrong. They will find something. They will find anything you did and they will magnify this to put the blame at your door. They will then provoke you to get a reaction out of you so they can find something to blame it on you. With us, we are slowly manipulated into their negative ways of thinking. It infects our minds. Yet with their gaslighting, projection, blame shifting, arguments, silent treatments and the rest, we are led to believe that it's us that needs to change. And we all need to learn and grow, but we don't need to change to suit other people, only to suit ourselves. Our minds are led to believe this is true as they often offer intermittent times where they play nice and magnify something we did to deserve them being nice to us. So we are left changing who we are time and time again to suit them, to attract their nice side and walking on eggshells to avoid their nasty side. In truth, 
they have a disorder and it's who they are. You did nothing to cause it. There's nothing you can do to change it and there's nothing you can do to control it. You can, however, learn who they are, what and why they do what they do and learn how to handle them. Why you don't need to defend yourself to them, why you don't need to change for them. No one deserves this treatment. You did nothing wrong. Trying to help others is good. Just help those who are willing to be helped and leave those who only want to bring you down. No empathy. Compassionate empathy. When we can think and feel how another person is feeling, then we become extremely moved to help them in any way we can. This is the empathetic ability narcissists are completely lacking in and what can keep us trapped within a narcissistic relationship. No matter who that narcissist is within your life, a friend, family member, boss, partner, we can think how they feel. We can feel how they feel and are moved to helping them. Why even the grandiose narcissist might pull out the victim card to pull on your empathy and get their own needs met. Also why they can hurt you so badly and just walk away. They cannot think and feel about how you might be feeling. They have detached their emotions and simply do not care, especially if their own needs have been met elsewhere. They just see no need for you within their life, yet If you're not giving them what they want, they feel anger towards you. And as they can have cognitive empathy, they know exactly what your weaknesses and vulnerabilities are. And they will use them against you to hurt you as they are throwing massive tantrums to get their own way. Narcissists potentially have negative empathy and they might actually have... Empathy is just different from those who genuinely care about others. Where they can see the empathy in others, they use empathy to manipulate, to take people down, to find the empathy in another towards them and use it against them to meet their own needs. And once those needs are no longer getting met, they seek to destroy. They use people's caring, empathetic side against them, just like their negative emotions. So they might have the cognitive empathy um, so they can think empathetically, yet they can only use it to see another's empathy as a way they can gain control. What vulnerabilities they can use against someone to manipulate, yet they don't have the emotional empathy to actually care about what another person might be feeling. People with understanding can still feel anger and rage when they are provoked. People with empathy still feel anger and rage when provoked by others on things that they care about the most. Narcissistic people can pick up on others' empathy on what others genuinely care about. Then instead of using positive empathy to connect in a positive way to help others, to lift others up, They use what people care about the most to hurt people the most so they can manipulate to get their own needs met. How can you communicate with a narcissist? The best advice is don't. Go no contact, leave them to live their life and you go and live yours. Yet this isn't always possible. How to communicate with a narcissist to get your point of view across correctly without an argument. If you still live or work with a narcissist or someone that's not a narcissist but has some traits or you've left them, um, they've left you and you have children together. There is ways to deal with the disagreements and arguments and there is ways to stop yourself from getting drawn in. Narcissists love to draw you into non-productive arguments to gain whatever attention and emotion they can from you. It's just programmed into them. It's how their minds work from manipulating you to controlling you to get a reaction from you to spoil your day to their opinion is correct and no one else's matters. They only care about themselves. It's a case of my way and nobody else matters way. There is a way to communicate with a narcissist if your opinion is different from theirs. They 
however, will want to argue and fight. So first, knowing what's going on in their head, the more knowledge you have about how they think, the more power you will have in being able to regain control of your life. With a narcissist, it's all about them and to them you are in the wrong. If they did something wrong, of course, to them it wasn't actually them. They're not accountable. To them, it's you that made them act that way. They believe that they are entitled and they are better than everyone else. When realistically, everyone is good enough to be who they want to be. With a narcissist, it's all tactics and gameplay. Anything and everything they do is to keep them in control of those around them. They will get control with persuasion and manipulation with their tone of voice and the words they use. All else fails, they will go for the silent treatment or violence. They are stubborn and have a closed mind. If it's of no benefit to them, they simply do not care. The worst thing you can do is argue with them. They love the emotional reactions and the attention you give them. To them, it's a game of winning and they'll keep going. You cannot win an argument with a narcissist by arguing with them. As to them, their opinion is correct and they'll do what Ever they have to so that you believe them or you end up hurt, angry and frustrated. Towards an argument is a disagreement. It isn't to win. It's getting the point of view across and staying true to ourselves. A two-way conversation. You talk, they talk. You talk, they talk. We understand people have other opinions. We don't always agree. Sometimes we agree to disagree. Whereas a narcissist will just happily keep going and provoking people. If you think you can go to a narcissist to explain your thoughts or your feelings, why you've done something, why what they did has hurt the children, believing you can explain it to them, it's not going to happen. They'll either see it as criticism, which they hate, or they'll just not think your opinion matters as they're always right. They think they are superior and no one will be able to change their mind. With that lack of empathy towards others, they cannot see what they do to other people. So if they have hurt you or your children, they don't care. They don't see it. They just feed off your attention, positive or negative. Some narcissists on the extreme do see what they are doing and are a lot more calculated in how they do it. Those you really need to go no contact with. A narcissist only thinks their own way and they will never take other opinions on board. As to them, if it doesn't match theirs, you are wrong. They don't want to or need to understand others. They also hate to think you feel competent within yourself. Whatever you think, say or do that doesn't match the narcissist, they believe you are wrong. You have to remember when you're trying to discuss anything with a narcissist and you are, in effect, talking to a toddler, not getting their own way. Toddler's language and understanding isn't fully developed. When they've been caught red-handed doing something that they shouldn't, most toddlers, like all narcissists, will lie or deny all knowledge when... You are asking a toddler to do something they don't want to do. They can strop, sulk, stare you out, play the waiting game, lash out to see if you will give in before the toddler does. When you say no to a toddler where they haven't learned to control their emotions, they can scream the house down. They can stop whatever they are doing, sit down wherever they are and not move, waiting to see just how far they can push you and how you will handle it. The toddler is learning. Toddlers can try many methods to see if they can have their needs met until they learn and develop as they grow how to handle their emotions and how to communicate the right way. Most often you cannot reason with a toddler. You reward a toddler for good behaviour and punish for bad behaviour. Level up is one method used to communicate with a narcissist to get the right outcome for you. 
narcissistic people live for attention. Take that attention away and like toddlers, they might act out to receive some, yet the longer you give no reaction to their negative behaviour, the more chance you'll have of them either leaving you alone and finding attention elsewhere or playing nice to receive your attention. At that point, when they play nice, give them your attention. Not too much, just enough for them to learn how you will and will not be treated. This isn't easy. You have to be in a good place. You have to know who you are and you have to have great control. Or know how to deal with your emotions, otherwise you get sucked back into their games. So how to deal with a narcissist is similar to how to deal with a toddler, which if you've had a toddler, you'll know isn't always that easy. And like toddlers, they are individuals and they all act differently. They have the similar characteristics, the similar traits, but they are individuals. So one, reward good behaviour. Make sure you compliment them for their good behaviour. So if your parent starts being nice to you, things like, I'm so pleased that we are getting along. When your adult child is speaking to you again, I'm so pleased we're talking again. When your ex arrives on time to pick up the children, thank you, the children and I really appreciate you. When they are late, Just say things like, the children were far happier last week when we kept to our arrangements. Could we try to keep that in the future, please? Or would you mind letting me know so I can pre-warn the children as they are really excited when you are coming and they are pleased to see you? Yes, this is extremely difficult. You have to focus on the long-term gains and not the short-term pain of being nice to someone who treated you so wrong. You have to detach your feelings and focus on the outcome when you are left with no choice but to deal with these people. Using the term we in the sentence often helps as they see others as an extension of themselves. So using the term we with them, you're not passing the blame on to anybody. Two, do not react to any of their negative behaviour. This only makes them do it all the more. As kryptonite is to Superman, no reaction is to a narcissist. And at the start, be prepared for them to up their games. If you need to seek protection orders, some are dangerous. So speak to the authorities and get those protection orders. Go no contact and move away from Good people don't want or like manipulating others. However, the best way to communicate with anyone is to do so in a way that they communicate with you. Knowing that they understand on their level and with a narcissist lowering yourself to their level. I'm not saying fight back, argue, threaten. Don't do things like this. This just pulls you further into their games, leaves you with resentment and it's not who you are. It's a case of when they don't get their own way, they can fall silent and await for you to beg. When the narcissist does something to hurt you, stay silent. Not to get them to beg, to to have your own peace. Trying to discuss things with them is pointless. They are not listening to how you feel. A narcissist will be used to you making it up to them. So often when you fall silent, they will either up their games to get a reaction out of you, they will leave you alone or they will start to play nice. And when they do start to play nice, I acknowledge them. Don't bring up why you did whatever you did. Don't try and explain it to them. They are not interested. Um, They live for attention and You're not doing this to get them to change, to walk on eggshells around you, to anything like that. And you will not get a narcissist to behave that way anyway. You're not doing it to manipulate them. You're doing it to live a happy life for you. Don't get drawn into arguments. Remember, they will not change. They will not genuinely care for you. You are not doing this to please them. You are doing it for a calmer life. And when you're having those disagreements, those arguments with them and they're coming at you with all the things, all the projection, all the 
all the way they twist the argument, twist the words onto you, twist your words onto you, make it out to be your fault. The simple responses to these kinds of things are, that's your opinion and you're entitled to your opinion, but it's not my opinion. You don't need to explain any more. You don't need to explain any less. Just letting them know that they're entitled to their opinion and you are entitled to yours. With a narcissist, they reward and they punish. This is how they communicate. They never seem to develop past that toddlerhood communication. So rewarding them when they are acting nice, no reaction when they are acting negatively. It's not easy, yet with some narcissistic people it is possible. If they are an ex, some might try getting back together with you when you're giving them the attention. And if you are at the start of this, it isn't easy when you've only just finished sleeping with someone. So working on your trauma bonds so you don't get sucked back in. Also stick to your boundaries. No means no. Don't put yourself in a situation you will struggle to get out of. So don't let them in your home. Try to keep all meetings for children in public and try to keep as much communication as possible via messages and emails and save all those messages and emails. Don't insult them when they are insulting you or when you are trying to uh, appeal to their caring nature. They don't have a caring nature. You can't appeal to their good side. You can't say, you can't try and explain how the children feel or how you feel. They're not listening. It's hard as narcissistic people can take the slightest thing as criticism and so if you're trying to explain how they've made you feel they will twist it round onto the fact that you've made them feel like that if you try and explain how they've made the children feel they will twist it round to how you've made the children feel like that so know your own truth know what's happened know how you're feeling how the children are feeling and leave the narcissist to it. You cannot explain yourself to them because they are not listening. Know your point and let them think whatever they want to think. The words that they use, use those words back. They understand things like, I'm sorry you feel that way, as that is one that they like to use on other people. When they are not happy about not getting their own way with you anymore and they're feeling frustrated and they're coming at you with all the manipulative games use that one on them just turn around and say i'm sorry you feel that way observe their behavior and it's an easy way to see how they work once we step out of the game stop absorbing their words and their behavior and start observing what they do what game they might try next the they do cycle round a pattern of behavior and when you can narcissistic people do actually study people do actually study how people work now you're not turning into a narcissist to do this because you're not doing it with everybody you're doing it to protect yourself against a narcissist so studying their patterns of behavior so you know what stunt they're going to pull next remember what they do is never out of love compassion or caring about others it is for them to look good and to win once you know what they are doing, it's far easier to step out of their game. The best thing is to distance yourself and love you for you. Knowing your reasons come from a good place and a kind heart. And if the narcissist doesn't want to understand that, it's not your problem. Trying to explain yourself to them only leaves you frustrated. Most of them aren't listening. The rest of them do not care. Remember, you only define you and others' opinions of you do not matter. Knowing you are in control of you and taking back control of your life, that you do not need to explain yourself to those unwilling to listen. When we explain ourselves to a narcissist, all that does is they then use it against us to keep us trapped in that situation. 
we have to get to a point where we stop focusing on what they are doing, what games they are playing, how they are living their lives, how they are trying to get to us, what they might be up to now. And it's okay at the start. Most people at the start want to learn and learning's good. Knowledge is powerful. So having the knowledge of what they do helps us move on. But the more knowledge we gain, we have to then distance ourselves from them and start focusing on us, focusing on our thoughts, focusing on our lives, focusing on where we want our lives to go. Start creating those new dreams, those new goals, those new visions of where we would like to be six months from now, a year from now, what you would like out of your life and focusing more on that, focusing more on achieving what you want from your life now, leaving the past behind you. It's very easy to say, just go no contact with any narcissist. It's not that easy to implement. And with some, the way they have you in situations, it's not always possible to go no contact. If you can find a way to go no contact, that is always the best. Otherwise, when it comes to communicating with them, you have to communicate with them on their level of understanding. So once you know how their minds work, you can learn different ways to communicate with them. And good people don't always like doing this because it feels like, it does feel a bit like you're manipulating the narcissist. But that is the way the narcissist communicates. Don't get into verbal disagreements. Don't try to explain yourself to them they're not interested. Anyone has any advice on how they've managed to handle a narcissist, please do add it into the comments. The best is to give them no reactions. Take that attention away from them when they are being hurtful, negative, spiteful, whatever they're doing. Those that are dangerous, get yourself away from and get those protection orders out. I will add a link into the description of the step-by-step online course that I have available. I shall add some videos on to explain more on observe, don't absorb, to explain more on their lack of empathy, on cognitive reflection, to give you more understanding of what you might be dealing with. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.